Hello, I'm Oliver Dixon from Doncaster Music Service and this is part of a series of videos introducing the Grade 3 ABRSM cello syllabus. In this video we'll be looking at one of the A pieces which is Watkins Ale. Now this is a 16th century English tune which means it was written in the 1500s, so about 500 years ago. Now as I say it's an English song um, about ale, i.e. beer. Uh, let's start by hearing the piece and then we'll make some initial observations about it. Let's make some initial observations about the piece then. So, what is the time signature? I'm not going to give you the answer to these questions because we're at grade three level now and I'd like you to think about it. So what is the time signature? What is the key signature? I.e. have a look what sharps or flats we may have we can see that there's a piano accompaniment in the first two bars, the rhythms outlined above them. What is the overall structure of the piece? Can you see any patterns within the music? Okay, so the time signature is 6-8, which means that there's six quavers in a bar, but we've got a feeling of two beats in a bar. One, two, three, four, five, six. The key is G major because we've got one sharp, which is F sharp. You can also see that the piece begins and ends on a G, which is a good clue. Structure wise, broadly the piece is in three main sections. A tune or melody is stated and then it's decorated or ornamented when it's played again. For example, if you look at the first section, which is uh, lines one and two, on the first line we've got, and on the second line that becomes, section two is then lines three and four, and section three, is the bottom two lines. Just to get you started then, let's have a look at the start of the piece. Of course, I can't teach you the whole thing. So, looking at the rhythm, we've got a crotchet, a quaver, a crotchet, a quaver. So, in order to count that and work out how it should sound, we need to come back to what we said about the time signature which is six eight. So we've got six quavers in each bar. And what you need to do is subdivide that in your head and be thinking one, two, three, four, five, six, tick, 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 tick. And that needs to keep going throughout the piece, um, particularly while you're learning it. So in that first bar there, and actually for the whole of the first line, you need to be thinking one, two, three, four, five, six, because the note changes um, on the first quaver, the third quaver, the fourth quaver, and the sixth quaver at the end of the bar. Now the notes on the first line uh, to accompany that rhythm begin with a G, fourth finger on the D string, F sharp, back to G, D, 
First finger on the D string, E, D, E again, B, third finger on the G string, then one note up, C on the G string, fourth finger, back to B, back to C, open G, three, one, open G, open D. So that's just the first line, but if you're working towards grade 3, I expect that you'll be able to work all of that out yourself. Looking at the second line then, and thinking about what we said about the first section, and this second half of it being a decorated version, uh, we've got these semi-quaver scalic figures. Now the notes are just uh, notes within G major, uh, and it's quite stepwise, going up or down, um, but in order to count the semi-quavers, Go back to your one, two, three, four, five, six, and think one and two and three and four, five, six. One and two and three and four, five, six. And that gives you the rhythm for that second line. Coming on to a few other top tips now. If you have a look at the second section, which is of course starting in bar 11, um, we've got. Which is just, um, you know, the rhythm is just quavers um, with that dotted quaver, semi-quaver on the fourth and fifth quavers. But when this uh, is decorated on the following line, we get some semi-quavers introduced there. And what's handy to know is that when you've got that tied note beats uh, quavers three to four, on the fourth quaver of the bar uh, that you're tied to and you don't change note immediately, um, there's actually a piano chord on that fourth quaver. So it's plonk, plonk. So that's really helpful when you play it with the accompaniment uh, to count that. Okay. Um, other things to note, the bowing in this piece, largely it's separate bows, it's just bowed out. At the start, um, and generally you want to think about sometimes rescuing the bow on the up bows, because you've got shorter up bow notes than down bow notes. Pick up bow. Again. You've got one slur, which is in bar 18. So don't miss that one slur. It's quite important in working your bowing out ready for the next bar beginning on a down bow. Looking at the dynamic markings in this piece then, well, it's marked to begin forte and it's also marked to end forte. The most variation comes in the middle section, which of course is bar, sorry, lines three and four. They both begin piano, and if you notice when I played it, I used really small bows. So that's something to try doing. But throughout both of these lines, there's a crescendo towards the end, and it builds to forte. So really make the most of that. It really shines brightly, that, that's, that bit there. Something else to note, um, which is just a couple of notes, but are easily missed is if you look towards the end of the uh, last two lines, you've got an F sharp, which of course you need to extend forward to on the C string. And So in that very last line, you'll be playing A, first finger on the G string, open G, extend to that F sharp, then play your E natural, which would normally be a third finger, with your second finger, because you need to return to that extended fourth finger, F sharp, again, and then the last note is of course an open G. Right, okay then, I hope that's been helpful and giving you a bit of an insight into Watkins Ale from the Fiddler Play Along collection and on the Grade 3 syllabus. Thank you very much.